Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our final destination in our armchair traveler series. Tonight, we're headed to Colombia. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Rachel. I'm the Adult Outreach and Event Coordinator for the Greenville County Library System. And I'm so glad you've joined us this evening. If you're not already familiar with our library system, make sure you head to greenvillelibrary.org to check out all that we have to offer. You can definitely check out our virtual events calendar and sign up for other wonderful events like tonight's. And you can also check out our adult virtual activities page. That's where you can access things on demand. So your library is always 24 seven. If you're not familiar with Zoom already, just make sure that you're muted. That's in the bottom left corner of your screen. You can mute and unmute yourself with that button. And then also just go ahead and have your video off during the presentation. Once we open it up to Q&A, then you can unmute and you can turn your video on if you like and talk to our presenters directly. But first, we'll have a long presentation all about Colombia. Make sure that you can put your questions in the chat box. Um, that's going to be to the right hand side of your screen. So you can chat your questions at any time when you think of them. I'll keep track of them and give them to our presenters at the end. All right, if you're ready, then buckle up. Put your seats in the upright position and secure your tray table. And we're about to head off to Colombia. Please join me in welcoming Stephen and Daniela. Welcome to the Armchair Traveler Series, Colombia, provided to you by staff members here at the Five Forks Library. Your host, Stephen, a librarian here at the Five Forks Library, and Daniela, library assistant here at Five Forks. Wonderful, wonderful. So before we get started, Daniela, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, well, I am a library assistant here at Five Forks. I am 26 years old. I spend a lot of my time reading, hence the library job. I also like playing video games, watching TV, crafting, I knit and I crochet. Um, I have a new nephew that I love making things for. That's great. So um, tell us a little bit how you are connected to Columbia. So my entire family is from Colombia. Literally everyone I know. Um, they all mostly live in Medellin, which is one of the biggest cities in Colombia. I used to spend all of my summers growing up um, in Colombia with my grandparents. My parents shipped me off for free day daycare. Um, so my aunts would always take me and show me around town. You know, I got to experience all the all the fun things of Medellin, eat all the delicious food and basically just be immersed in my home, my home life, my home culture. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Uh, and as for me, I am Steven, uh, and uh, I am an artist outside of work. Let's see. I specialize primarily in digital arts, but I also do watercolor ceramics. And uh, I love spending time with my family and friends, uh, either at the gym, uh, Pre-COVID, I was all about going and traveling places. Now, during COVID, I'm about staying at home and uh, playing games and making art and seeing the occasional friend when I can. And my connection to Colombia is very similar to Daniela's. My family uh, is all in Colombia. So mainly, mainly uh, parts of Medellin, Armenia, Quindío, um, a little bit in Pereira. Let's see, I can't think of anywhere else that they would be, but that's the general areas in which they are located. And um, I would go there once every few summers, but mainly uh, I would receive the fullness of Colombianness from my family who has emigrated to the United States. Um, my, on my dad's side, they came over in the 70s, and my mom's side, they came over in the 80s. And I've been living in, I guess, the the glow of that Colombian culture here in the U.S. through the through the food through the uh, music, and it's it's lovely. Our intent today is to provide you, our virtual armchair traveler, with a little bit of the sights, the taste, the feel of Colombia, and we couldn't do that. We couldn't create a fuller picture without at least covering a little bit of the geography, climate animals exports of Colombia some basic facts so you get a better understanding of what Colombia is so first we'll start with that so there might be a few things you think of when you think of Colombian exports let me tell you now you're probably wrong here's why so the actual 
important things at Columbia Exports are going to be your coffee, Ooh. which I'm sure you drink every single day. And I'm if drinking you it right don't, now. Really, you should. <laughs> I'm drinking it right now for sure. You've got um, fresh cut flowers, actually. It's the second largest agricultural export in the country. It's only um, competitor, really, the first one on the country is Netherlands. But we don't talk about them. Yeah, and I think that the, uh, the Rose Bowl Parade, all the roses there are, or the Macy's Day Parade, the Macy's Day Parade, all the roses there are from Colombia. See, I didn't even know that. That's amazing. Yeah, that's But that's great. awesome. <laughs> um, we've also got a lot of um, exports of oil, textiles, and one of my personal favorites, emeralds. Oh, Columbia oh. actually produces 80% of the world's emeralds. So all those beautiful green stones, Colombian. Wonderful. It's extremely important for a virtual tourist like yourself to understand at least a little bit about the geography and wildlife of Colombia. We've got four major geographic zones in Colombia. We've got the Andes Mountains, the Caribbean and Pacific Lowlands, the Eastern Janos Plains, and the Amazon in the south. Let's start with the Andes Mountains. There are three mountain ranges in there, the eastern, central, and uh, western sides of the Andes Mountains that are border with Ecuador and Mount Huila. The Caribbean lowlands cover northern Colombia and are around kind of like a triangular shape. You've got your swamps and your streams and you'll find lots of banana and cotton plantations in that area. Near Panama, we've got a rainforest region that has one of the highest plant and animal diversity levels in the entire world. Up next, we have the Pacific lowlands that lie between the Pacific Ocean and the western side of the Andes Mountains. The northern part of that region is called El Choco. There are thick rainforests and swamplands in that region. The rainforests are home to an abundance of life and they receive an average rainfall of 354 inches a year, which make it one of the wettest on the planet. The Janos are going to be your vast flat plains across the northern part of eastern Colombia. Even though it's 70% of the land mass, only 3% of the population live in that area. But it's the main oil producing region in the country. And they also have a lot of cattle raising, which is a very important economic activity in the country. And last but not least, we have the Amazon. The tropical rainforest reigns supreme in the Amazonian region. The indigenous people who live there are skilled at making medicines from the plants in that forest. Colombia's climate is actually quite unique compared to that of the US as um, it is a tropical nation and so the climate is based upon the elevation. There are three major climate zones. Uh, one is the Tierra Caliente, the hot zone, Tierra Templada, the temperate zone, and Tierra Fria, the cold zone. So Tierra Caliente, the hot zone, is going to be everything below 3,000 feet. It's going to have a really nice average temperature of 75 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> That's kind of hot for me. It, but it's so nice. It's so comfortable. Around 86% of the country falls into the zone, and we all love it there. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I, I actually prefer more of the Tierra Templada, which is uh, elevations of 3,000 to 6,500 feet. The uh, average temperature there is a cool 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. That's, that's my range. And then, of course, we have our Tierra Fria, which we don't like, or at least I don't like, because... I, I don't like either. <laughs> <laughs> its annual temperatures are around 57 degrees. Everything here is oh. an elevation of 6,500 feet, and the capital, Bogota, falls into there. Um, which so, might explain why they have a lot of hearty foods to keep themselves warm. Hearty foods, thick jackets, and uh, a quandary to me. But they're beloved. <laughs> Colombian animals are a global treasure, and we're going to cover just a little bit about them here. We don't want to dwell too much because the heart and soul of Colombia, we feel, is Medellin, right, Danny? Yes, definitely. So, even though Colombia only covers 1% of the planet's surface, it's home to 14% of the world's known species. We've got 35,000 plant species, over 600 amphibian species, so all you frog lovers out there, rejoice. We've got 475 species of reptiles, 450 mammal species, and my personal favorite, 1,800 bird species. That's a lot of feathers. Including toucans. Oh, toucan. 
And uh, these, these animals here are, a lot of them are located only in Colombia. A third of the plants and 12% a, uh, uh, of the animals are endemic. You can't find them anywhere else. And that's uh, saying something, especially for a rainforest that's dwindling in size every year. Uh, and in that rainforest, we have four species of sloths. <laughs> a very fun factoid you had to know because sloths are adorable. Yes, they are. And it was something we just felt was important. It's very important. <laughs> And what is a trip to Colombia without experiencing its unique culture that only Colombia can provide? In this little virtual tour, we're going to cover things like food, music, what else? We're also going to have some of our more important holidays, favorite sports, and places and things you must see if you go visit. The holiday calendar of Colombia is just populated with so many things. It really is. They have a lot of many holidays that create long weekends for them, which I'm very, <laughs> very jealous of. My aunt's are just like, oh yeah, you know, we've got a long weekend because of this random mini festival. It's like, oh, okay, I still have to go to work. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if once, once you're over there, please be sure to take advantage of the festivals that are happening, the carnivals that happen quite frequently. But uh, we'll spend this time here talking about just maybe a couple of things that you have to experience in your time there. Uh, as we recommend, you go during the months of December through March, as you know, climate-wise, they're wonderful mm -hmm. over there in Medellin. Uh, luckily for you, that means Christmas. Oh, Christmas in Colombia is an experience. 10 out of 10 would recommend. <laughs> it's, it's a lot, since Colombia is very much a Roman Catholic country, it's a very unifying thing that they all do Christmas. It's not just and every little household does its thing. It's like the whole town itself. The towns takes part exactly, of Christmas. Exactly, exactly. It's a, it's a, uni it's a, group effort <laughs> to decorate everything and to party it out and not, not just the one day it's uh the 12th no, 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 the, no it's the, the entire month the entire of December. entire month essentially yeah we have the, the novena it's the, the official nine days before christmas and then you have like the days after december like in, in, into yeah. january yeah until uh basically dia three de, king's day yeah dia de, dia de magos yeah so that's like what the 6th of january the 6th of january exactly that's, that's the official end of the christmas season there but anytime in between it's just it's uh decorations it's food it's it's partying it's uh celebrating that good old christmas spirit yes and you know we'll definitely have lots of lovely christmas light displays to see people decorate their houses the towns decorate the streets and most of the small towns um, that neighbor, like kind of the suburbs of Medellin, have a town square, and that town square gets decked out <laughs> in lights. They usually have some sort of theme, and they'll put up, you know, things that go with that theme. Like I remember seeing a big lit up um, butterfly and a big lit up mushroom. They oh, even wow. had a very large lit up tree. Um, not not a tree decorated in lights. A tree made. Oh, tree made of from lights. lights. Yeah, yeah. So that you could walk through. It was very gorgeous. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, at least in my time there, I don't remember seeing any evergreens in Colombia. Do you remember seeing like evergreens, like pines? Not really. No, no, no. no. So, they, so they wouldn't necessarily decorate trees in the way we do here in the United States. I mean, States. it has started to become a thing. They've adopted the Christmas tree thing. You're right. They, I remember they my mom. My mom used to say that back in the day, they would just take like a, a scraggly tree, <laughs> wrap it in like tin foil or cotton just kind of give it a little more magical look and put balls on it but now they do have our pine tree fake trees going on yeah that's the thing yeah, the, the fake tree yeah, that's, that's the thing for sure and uh, i remember there being something about lanterns can you tell me about that oh the lanterns so those glows which people you can buy them now pre-made but it was a big thing where people would out of family create these paper lanterns out of tissue paper and then plop a little candle in there and set them alight um when I was little, I actually got burned by one oh, no. that my dad and oh, my no. uncles were making. <laughs> it wasn't a bad burn, but still, my, my dad... like a scar to make you remember things. <laughs> yeah, my, my mom always likes to bring that up around Christmas. I'm like, all right. Um, but you can see them floating around the sky. It's really nice in the, at night where you can see the little dots of light floating. Um, kids really like to chase them when they're on their way down to try to catch them and, and claim them as their own. Um, and we have, they have really big ones that have 
light fireworks, like small fireworks mm-hmm. underneath. So once it gets high enough, oh, wow, yeah. they, they go off and it's just like, pa 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 Yeah, I think the government over there kind of discourages use of lanterns, but you can't stop culture. <laughs> you can't stop culture. No, it might be slight fire hazard, but uh, culture progresses even through that. <laughs> it's not fun unless it's dangerous, right? I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> um... But yeah, I, I, I remember my family at least uh, making big wishes before lighting the lantern, you know, kind of, you know, letting that being like a symbol of hope or peace, you know, it's, it's a very, uh, on one level it's very fun, very interactive for the whole community, and on another level it's very, just a, almost a spiritual event. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's very nice. You must go and experience this uh, Christmas in Colombia. Uh, what else can we talk about? Um, well, actually, if we, we, we bring it full back um, into August. Oh, right, back in August, all right. Yes, yeah. we've got La Feria Las Flores, which I think is one of the biggest um, celebrations uh, in Medellin. Um, it's every year, and they've got a whole bunch of things for a few days. I think it's about five days mm-hmm. that they've got. They've got pageants. They have horse parades. Um They've got orchid showcases. They even have a classic car parade, which is one of my favorite things, and the very titular flower parade, which it's a it's a long parade line of people literally carrying these massive displays and arrangements of flowers on their backs, and they're gorgeous, literally just beyond words. Wow! Wow! And. Uh... I understand that there's some historical significance behind this particular holiday. There is. So the people carrying the flowers are called sigeteros. And it kind of represents back in the day during slavery in Colombia where where sigeteros were basically forced to carry the affluent men and women through difficult landscapes like up mountains and steep hills. Um, So these people just sit on a chair. These chairs were mounted on these slaves backs and they would carry them so the parade kind of represents that end of slavery and instead now those cultivators are showing off their hard work Ah. and their um livelihood basically and all the beauty of their flowers i see so Um, so instead of carrying now the burden of slavery they are now carrying the beauty of their work mm -hmm, that that is something amazing i think very much cultural and historical significance there and should be witnessed by any of our tourists here. Yes, it's definitely worth seeing. In any holiday occasion you'd wish to attend in Colombia, always take note that the artisans flock to the centers for you to be able to peruse their wares and buy amazing things. You should definitely keep in mind that they are indeed handmade and of quality. They are. Some of my favorite rings and earrings are actually made from Colombian artisans. Um, emeralds, right? <laughs> <laughs> not quite emeralds, but definitely uh, good good little metal rings that don't turn my finger green, which is always a plus. Um, and they also have very lovely snack stalls there, too. <laughs> People come out to, to, to make their, their fresh-made um, sweets as well. So, you know, so no one loses, really, when it comes to a holiday. Enjoy no, your wares, enjoy, enjoy your foods, enjoy the celebrating with, with the people there. There are plenty of things to do once you arrive in Colombia. So much to do that it's be, it would do it injustice for us to try to condense everything into uh, less than an hour or so of... of uh, things to do so we're just going to cover a few of the things that we're familiar with that we know that you'd love uh by going to colombia danny what do you you first uh recommend internally inside the city i would say um which city is that medellin medellin of course most Mm -hmm. of our experiences are in medellin just as an fyi Mm -hmm. it would be um the plaza botero which is but they're um one of the more well-known um Colombian artist Fernando Otero. There's a plaza in the city where they've got a lot of his statues um, around the whole plaza. Now his art is very unique. He likes to (laughs) 
he did sculptures and, and paintings, but all of his subjects are painted kind of out of proportion, bulbous type. They're all, they're all very round, va oh, very okay. round characters, very uh, chubby. <laughs> Chubby's a way to put it, right? Yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> Overall chubby in every feature. <laughs> so I, I like I like his uh, his horse. It's a very thick horse. My favorite is the chubby bird. He's a very round birdie, and he's very cute. Yeah, Botero is, uh, I would say, one of the uh, national artists of Colombia, and, and everyone there knows who Botero is. Uh, so I would definitely go uh, to the Plaza Botero and see his artworks. And if I understand correctly, there are other attractions in the Plaza Botero, right? Yes, um, right surrounding the plaza, there is also uh, the Museo de Antioquia, which is the An Antioquia Museum, and also El Palacio de la Cultura, so the Cultural Palace. Both places are going to be very rich in artwork. Um, definitely worth a walk to go through and see all the all the gorgeous artwork that they have. Um, the museum is going to have a lot of different rooms with a lot of different things. There's definitely going to be a section for Fernando Botero, some international art, um, another uh, artist by the name of Luis Caballero, but they also, you know, go, um, they cycle through some of their, their uh, collection pieces over the years. The Cultural Palace is going to be a little more historical base, so if you're a history buff, definitely check it out. It's going to be the iconic um, black and white tiled building in the area. It's a gorgeous building to look at, even Definitely. if you don't want to go inside. If you're an architect, kind of buff as well, you'll, you'll see, you'll notice instantaneously that uh, <clears throat> the uh, the center there is a gothic revival with some Art Nouveau influences, and it's just simply a delight to look at and to experience first and foremost. I believe there's a library available inside the, the palace and uh, a little art museum as well. Mm -hmm. and uh, and a little cafe, if you would little, like a snack. Of course, and as you should be snacking all the time in Colombia. It's delightful with the, with the parva. Yes, and I'll help keep up your energy while you walk around a lot. And your walking will burn off those calories, so it's a win-win situation. Speaking of walking, there's a thing that needs to be done when you're in Colombia as well. It is uh, the tour of Guatape. So Guatape is a location which one can trek to, uh, maybe uh, an hour or two away. Yeah, it's about an hour and a half to two hour drive from Medellin. Yeah, and uh, there is where you can have these wonderful boat tours and water sports. But the main thing that I would recommend is that you take your eyes to Piedra del Peñol, which is a massive uh, rock jutting out of the ground, uh, about what, 700, over 700 steps to get, get to, to the, the very top, yes. It, right, to get to the very top of that rock there. And you could see the entire countryside with that, from there. It's amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. It's a very beautiful view. You can see all of the lake that it's um, right on. And um, it is a thigh workout. It's a lot of steps. But the view is definitely, definitely worth it. And they've got a little restaurant down at the bottom and also some food. Um, vendors at the top so you can regain your energy and you can stay up there for a while and just enjoy the view before you come back down um, and going up and down is two separate directions so you don't we won't run into people um, trying to make their way <laughs> up and you can take your time definitely um, definitely it, it is amazing you can see uh, Guatape over there you can see Piedra del Peñol uh, Las Partidas Embalse del Peñol it's amazing mm -hmm, so it's, it's a very very worse uh, track upwards. Um, just don't stress yourself. Don't, don't go too <laughs> fast. Don't pass yourself out. You, there's there's definitely people who will stop and, and take a break on their way up. So you won't. It's worth it. It's worth it. You won't. Uh, you won't be looking weird or. Don't let, don't let Danny discourage you. It's amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. I'm just saying you don't have to worry about about taking your breaks going upwards. So moving on to other things that we can do in Medellin or around Medellin, I understand there's this place called Parque de los Pies Descalzos or uh, Park you know, Bare Feet Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Danny, tell me about that. So Barefoot Park was a public park. My aunts took me a lot too when I was younger. Um, it was very, it was designed to be very zen-like. It's designed so that visitors can just kind of relax and play around, both children and adults play around in um, the area barefoot, hence the name. So you've got your gardens, you've got bamboo areas that are all very calming and pretty. Um, you've also got water fountains that you can splash around in. 
and a sand area. Um, it's not like your fine beach sand. It's a little more coarse, so I would proceed with caution <laughs> going in there. It might be a little pebbly and uncomfortable if you just jump right in. But it's, it's very nice to just go and kind of relax on a nice day. Um, they've got little food areas nearby. Um, and they also have, actually, an interactive museum nearby. Oh, is that that's nearby? Mm -hmm. Oh, very cool, very cool. Uh, let's see, that's the EPM, right? Yes, that is. It's, it's an interactive museum that is funded by the big utility company. Um, Empresas Publicas Medellin. de Medellin. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right, that's right. They have, a, if, I, if I remember, they have 22 rooms and uh, over four buildings that provide an interactive educational tour that explains technology in an entertaining way. Yes, they do. It was, a, it was definitely a very fun thing to go through um, as a kid, but my aunt also had a lot of fun <laughs> with me. Um, one of the things that I distinctly remember is learning how the shape of water in a droplet was in, the, in that museum, and also uh, a simulation of understanding the power of an earthquake by standing on a platform that moves. Oh, that's really, that's so cool. Yes. And, uh, they even while well, he's back in the day they had a, a water fountain to to kind of <laughs> promote yes back in the day when i was a child <laughs> they had a they had a, a water fountain to kind of promote you know the way they were filtering the water and making it safer for people to drink and they're like oh this is the water that all the people at the utility company drink and i thought wow these smart people drink this water it's gonna make me smarter if i drink it <laughs> <laughs> did it work did it work <laughs> i mean i got straight a's that year so there we go so everyone go to the uh, epm and get you some smart water yes. <laughs> not, not no no relation <laughs> <laughs> no relation but it, it is nearby and it's, it's definitely a fun uh little museum to go through you know if you want something a little more interactive than your regular art museum nice and so we spoke of some uh, specific things you can and do but i recommend you explore go see the shops go go uh, go horseback riding there's a lot of that especially about uh there's horseback riding you can walk around you can rent mopeds you can go through taxi taxi driving over there is kind of fun uh there are taxis everywhere yeah, taxis yeah. and buses that's actually a good point there's a lot of public transportation yes, in Colombia, so definitely. you'll be you'll be fine in order to get from place to place. Oh, oh fun thing! Be forewarned. I don't uh, I don't know where you're from, but the driving in Medellin is worse. <laughs> it is a little hectic. <laughs> Say your prayers, and you'll be fine. It's a fun way. It's it's not it's not, <laughs> not, 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 not that bad. It's just interesting. It is um, interesting. Red lights are suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> not true. <laughs> They heed the red light. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I can be harsh on my own country. Um, if you just want to experience the public transportation, buy a ticket to the metro and ride it from end to end. Right, um, right. Oh, they can, also have those sky cars, right? Yes, the cable cars. The cable cars, yeah, yeah. You can, you can take a quick, not really quick, but you'll take a, you'll take a ride past the countryside and see a, the whole city. It's, it's beautiful. That. And as long as you have the one ticket, you can get on and then go all the way to the end. Danny, do you know what my favorite part of Colombia is? If it's my favorite part, it's food. <laughs> yeah, it's the food. It's food. <laughs> so when you're down there traveling around, the first thing you should probably think about is what you're going to eat. And let, let me tell you, first thing on your list, at least, at least for me, would be arepa. What's arepa? Oh, arepa is food from the gods. It is very delicious cornmeal griddle cake, yeah, I suppose yeah. is the best way yeah. to say it. Um, you'd be made, you can make it with cornmeal and water to make the dough or fresh it's made from um, corn that's been soaked up and boiled and then ground into a dough yeah yeah and then it's all nicely like cooked on a stove top and it gets this nice crispy outside layer ah but it's cooked uh, on a grill on a stove top so it's a grilled but still yes. uh, mm, delicious and so it's got this nice crusty layer on the outside if it's thick enough it's nice and and soft on the inside and you just slather that thing with butter maybe top it with some cheese and it is divine absolutely it is a national staple in Colombia you cannot you know every meal could have it I would have it with every meal if my diet would let me <laughs> but yeah they, they, they serve it there um, 
uh, like she said, with, uh, with butter and maybe a little cheese on top. Uh, some places have it uh, nice and round. Uh, other places as wide and flat as a dinner plate. Um, one of my favorites is to have it stuffed with uh, various meats and cheeses, like uh, like ch chorizo, chicharron. Uh, mm -hmm. What else would you put in there? Uh, some shredded beef. Yeah. You can put even a little piece of the corn or shredded chicken in there. Mm. Top mm. that off with some avocado, maybe some guacamole, mm. Mm. some salsa rosada, which here you would know as Heinz's version of mayo ketchup. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it is delicious, and so you can't skip out on the arepa. And every you know, every street corner, more or less, in Medellin, at least has like a vendor in the mornings yelling out, "Arepas, arepas, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yes. <laughs> They'll wake you up in the morning, but you won't get mad because it's delicious. It is delicious. Uh, they also have a different kind of arepa called arepa de chocolo, right? Yes, arepa de chocolo is going to be made with a sweeter corn, so it definitely tastes different than your regular dip but it's going to taste sweeter but if you still put butter on it and you can still put cheese on it it's still a delight to have potentially yeah. doesn't pair as well with other things that i wouldn't you, i wouldn't stuff a sweet arepa right um, no no i would I definitely wouldn't it's I feel like, definitely I feel like a it's, standalone with butter and cheese yeah yeah it's kind of hearty too I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it fills you a bit more than than the other so um, I guess you could eat it with maybe a meat on the side. On the side. On the side. You but not on it. Not on it, no. No, No. well, uh, base arepa, you can put meat on it, in it, around yeah, it. Yeah. And so the arepa can be paired with another dish. Uh, another staple dish in uh, Colombia, it's a, well, at least in Medellin, in Antioquia, that region of Colombia, the uh, bandeja paisa. So, uh, Danny, let's build a bandeja paisa. I will say that the first and foremost, you cannot have any kind of dish, especially not a bandeja paisa, without your rice. And usually it's like a white, uh, long grain kind of rice, uh, cooked uh, maybe with some seasonings, a little garlic maybe, but uh, not, not, nothing, nothing too fancy. Yes. Savory, it's definitely a savory kind of rice. What, what would you put on that uh, bandeja paisa? Oh, you know you gotta have frijoles on there. You gotta have your beans. So they've got a nice red bean that you don't really find here very often. The closest thing here would probably be a cargamento bean. Right, or red kidney bean. Or a red kidney bean. In Colombia it's called a um, bola roja. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you gotta have your frijoles on there. And then of course, for me, you, you have to have your fried egg and your avocado. That's a staple thing on a bandeja baisa. Fried egg, avocado. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, did you mention chicharron? No. Yeah, that, that there is a, it's a thick cut of the pork belly that's usually cut into segments and then, what did you say, fried? Deep fried. Deep, deep fried, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, can be, it can be deep fried, it can be grilled, it can be deep fried. Usually it's dead, uh, deep fried and mm -hmm. it is uh, absolutely delicious. You also have your, your Colombian chorizo. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like a Latin sausage. Uh, it is. Listen, it's a spice or something, right? Yeah, it's a little, it's not like spicy, like hot spicy, but it's got spices in it and it's all nice and juicy. It, it is, it is. It pairs really well with everything else in that dish. And everything there is, uh, has a lot of umami flavors, a lot, it's, it's savory. Um, can I have your avocado on that dish? What else is on that banana paisa? Mm -hmm. Some banana paisas actually have morcilla. Which Morcilla. is a blood sausage. Blood sausage, yes, yeah, it's delicious. Yeah, yeah. it's like a, similar to like a blood sausage you would have in like German dishes. Mm -hmm. My mom loves morcilla. Yeah, I'm yeah. not so big of a fan. If you like liver flavors, it's morcilla is what you'd like. <laughs> that explains a lot. My mom loves liver. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, platano. You can't yeah, have your plantain half side without uh, your cut of a plantain, uh, whether it be. Um, Sweet plantains? Yeah, sweet plantains. Plantain, or, or savory. Exactly, exactly. And the difference here is that uh, your tostones or patacon is um, fried, deep, I would say just pan fried, right? Fried? Yeah, they're, they're double fried. Fried once in a segment, then squashed exactly, into exactly. like a little disc <laughs> and fried again. See, Danny is the cook, I am the eater. <laughs> <laughs> so, and they're salted, so it's nice and savory. Um, the, uh, the the sweet ones, they're not, they're not fried, right? Are they also fried? They are also fried. They're just not deep fried. They're, they're just like fried deep... in, a, in a small pan. Like a sauteed almost. Yes, in a, in like a sauteed, pan. yes. And they're thicker cut usually. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're the ones that are ripe, yeah? Yes, those are the ripe plantains. And they're nice and sweet. And if you cut them up and mix them with your rice and your meat, you get that nice salty sweet mix that's just heaven on your taste buds. 
would definitely recommend. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've also had them long ways and cut into the middle with like a with butter in the middle. Oh, you mean like baked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you had them yes. before? Yes. My mom likes making um, platano asado. Yes. I think uh, that's definitely something of the older generation. Yes. <laughs> you bake it, the whole thing, and then you slice it down the middle, and you can put cheese on it. It's mm -hmm. always cheese. Mm -hmm. Always cheese. So uh, I, there you have your bandeja, your basic bandeja paisa. You can have multiple variations, or more or less, but it's usually a very big dish. Uh, you, you will would, definitely have leftovers if you can't eat that much. <laughs> it's made, designed for a worker who is recovering from a long day's work or preparing for his long day at work. Mm -hmm. So you have, I guess, three caps, your, your rice, your beans, your, your arepa, your chicharron, your chorizo, your tostones, or sorry, patacones. What else? Your meats. Meats. Various meats. Cheeses, maybe on top of that. Maybe on top yeah, of that. Yeah, or, or, or galo. And ogallo. Yeah, yes, ogallo yeah. would be kind of like an extra seasoning on top. It's sauteed tomatoes and green onions, sometimes regular onions. Kind of varies, but those are that's your base. Um, and obviously some salt to give it some flavor. There we go. There we go. So when you go to Colombia, get you the bandeja paisa. It is a safe choice if you walk into a restaurant. Absolutely. It's sure to have a bandeja paisa <laughs> in Medellin. And they'll have pictures, but if you just want to, if you could just point out and be like, that one, you're gonna be satisfied. Yeah, yeah. So a bandeja paisa. What does that translate to? Like a, the the uh, the pail, the uh, the paisa pail. Paisa plate. Plate. Paisa plate. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. And paisa refers to uh, a person of that region, uh, Antioquia. Mm -hmm. um, another staple dish that you must go and enjoy is sancocho. <laughs> now, Danny, can you tell me a little bit about sancocho? So sancocho is gonna be like this really nice stew. Like it's gonna warm your soul. And there are different versions. The coast can have their seafood versions, but we're talking about Medellin. So you've got your chicken and you've got your beef stews. So you're gonna have your beef, you're gonna have potatoes, carrots, juca mm -hmm. or yucca. Yucca, here. cassava. Yeah. Cassava. Mm -hmm. um, and it's gonna simmer for at least, I think, 30 minutes. So you get this very rich stew. That's just, just it's. A myriad of deliciousness oh and yeah it just oh, yeah. warms you up inside it's warming it's it's, it's hearty it's uh it's tender the, the meats in there are so tender very tender yeah yeah. everything's very no. tender <laughs> the vegetables like cut like it's nobody's business right right and i uh, mean me personally i'm not so much of a fan of uh, of stews so i have what they call sudado which is very similar to sancocho except the difference is it doesn't have as much as a broth mm -hmm. in, in that dish and so, uh, yes, remember, remember, Colombia, you must have your bandeja paisa, you must have your sancocho, you must have your sudado. Uh, plenty to go there and to enjoy for throughout your week visits, however long you're staying in Colombia. So those are your major dishes, but what about your side stuff? Your, almost like your snacks, even. Your midday coffee snacks. You're, exactly, because in Colombia you have your, your mid meals. You don't have big dishes mainly. You have your, your, your breakfast, your brunch, your lunch, your other brunch, and, <laughs> and then your dinner, and then your after dinner. <laughs> They uh, might have learned a little bit from the hobbits. Maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe vice versa, I don't know. In any case, um, a big player in those um, mini meals is parba. And Danny, tell me about parba. Parba would be kind of like your bakery goods. They're not quite pastry-like. Some of them are, but for the most part, you're going to have your buñuelos, your pan de onos, your pan de quesos, and empanadas. And buñuelos is like a, a a fried cheese fritter. It's not sweet. It's a savory. Mm. Um, a nice little ball of deliciousness. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, pan de bono. Well, I, I don't know. I'm not much of a fan of it. So, Danny, tell me about pan de bono. Oh, pan de bono is like my life staple. Pan de bono is kind of like a. It, it's like a little bready type thing, but it doesn't use bread flour. It uses tapioca flour, which gives it a slightly different texture. And it's got cheese mixed in, so you just get this like light, cheesy, delicious pocket. It's hard to describe without having a picture, so we will include a picture for you. But it is, it is so good. Um, and if you thought that we didn't talk about cheese enough, the next thing, you know, pan de queso, is literally cheese bread. <laughs> it's literally cheese bread. It's basically like a pan de uno, but with extra cheese in it, and it's kind of shaped more than like a bagel shape. Right, right. And, and actually, an O, a ring. Yeah, actually it's a 
it's actually bread as opposed to like a tapioca kind of bread. It's bread mm-hmm. bread. Uh, and then empanadas is you're going to have a, essentially a pocket of uh, potato and shredded beef, right? Beef, sometimes chicken. Sometimes. I mean, I've, I've had more mainly beef with beef. Yes, right? the traditional one is beef. Yes, potato right. and beef uh, that's wrapped in like a cornmeal dough and deep fried. Mm-hmm. And that is delicious. It is called empanadas. You eat that with your side of uh, ají. Which can be is this salsa? Yes, it's a Colombian it's a Colombian salsa. salsa. It's a little chunky. I've had it chunky, mm-hmm. and uh, it can be spicy, not spicy. I recommend spicy with your empanada. Mm, you yeah. S- so you, you take a bite from that little uh, half moon pocket, eat, pour some ahi on there, eat, and keep going. <laughs> and keep going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is delicious. It goes well with your mid midday snacks or lunch or whatever. <laughs> multiple meals you have a day in Colombia. Yes, and empanadas can be found everywhere, and they can be found of varying sizes. My recommendation would be to try to find a medium-sized one. Yeah, Sometimes you... the bigger ones lose the balance of flavor a little bit. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, I feel like the small ones that uh, can fit in the palm of your hands are kind of wasting your time, but the ones that actually fit in your hand, like the entirety of your hand, that's the size you want to go for. Mm-hmm. Anything bigger, and, and it's uh, like, like that, like Danny says, it's a little much. <laughs> So we have our foods, our solid foods that I hope you try over there in Colombia. But what are you, what are you going to drink with those wonderful foods? Uh, you can't mention Colombia without mentioning coffee. I'm having some right now, actually. Mm, as am I. And it's delightful. Absolutely. Coffee, like here in the United States, is so important in Colombia. Uh, you have it uh, with breakfast, lunch, even dinner. <laughs> If you're bold, dinner. Yeah, yeah I, 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 that would be me. My grandpa was that way. <laughs> yeah, you have it uh, three different kind of ways. It's tinto, you know, with black, with a little bit of sugar maybe. Perico, coffee with sugar and milk. And then you have, uh, it's usually accompanied with the parva that we mentioned earlier with the cheese. Oh, so good. And some folks even put cheese into your coffee to let it melt in there, giving the coffee a little bit of a, of a creamy flavor and then giving you a cheesy coffee snack at the end of the bottom of the cup. Mm-hmm. It's something to look forward to. And then... Um, that can also be done with mm-hmm. hot chocolate, which oh, yeah. is my oh. favorite oh, way yeah, yeah, to yeah, have right. your yeah. little cheese. You get your nice cup of steaming hot chocolate, dunk some cheese in there, and then at the end you have a little surprise. Absolutely, absolutely. And they nice, make, salty, sweet. Yeah, in Colombia they have they make the, the, the hot chocolate using um, that, that brick, right? Yes, it's actual brick chocolate. Yeah, yeah, you put boiled it. Boiled in, in milk. Or agua panela, even. Oh, that's right. It brings us to agua, agua panela. Tell us about that. Agua panela is quite literally panela water. And panela is going to be like a hardened puck of sugarcane juice. So it's, it's, it's sweet, but it's actually kind of not overpowering. It's not overpowering at all. No, no. It, even though it is. Literal sugar. Literal sugar, yeah. There's flavor in there. Mm -hmm. And so you will boil that in a big pot of water. You can either do the whole puck, you can cut it up. Um, My grandma always did a whole puck every morning in a very large pot of water. Um, And you can drink that hot or cold, room temperature. Um, Colombians really believe that agua panela with a little bit of lime helps cure the common cold, or at least (laughs) soothes your throat from it. but it's kind of it's very refreshing and it's it's oh. it's had all throughout the day really mm, yeah like, like like coffee it is a staple in colombia as well for the locals uh what else is a drink it's similar to agua panela is a guarapo but the difference in guarapo and agua panela is that uh guarapo is made from freshly you know freshly extracted cane juice uh, Sorry, cane sugar, cane juice, mm-hmm. as opposed to a slightly processed panela. Um, and you just extract it straight from the sugar cane, the juice, and you mix it with, uh, what would you mix it with? Normally, it's the, the, the sweetness is cut with some lime, mm-hmm. so it'll go into a big pot with lime juice, and you got your ice in there to, to freshen it up, which makes it really refreshing, and a very nice balance of like sweetness and tartness. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a lovely greenish color. <laughs> so it's yeah. a very, it's a wonderful experience all around. There we go. So you have agua panela, guarapo, and you know, on that same train of thought with the juices and whatnot, you see, you have jugos naturales. Uh, Colombians are big on natural juices. You know, it does. It makes sense considering we do produce a lot of fruit down there. Yes, there's a lot of delicious fruit in Colombia. Some that you can't find in the states. So I would. Uh, definitely suggest that if you go visit to 
keep an eye out for some fruits that you don't normally see um, and maybe give them a try. Um, absolutely, absolutely. But jugos naturales and natural juices can be made in two ways. So you've got your options. You can either have them made with milk, which makes them a little creamier, my personal favorite, or with water. And think of it as kind of like a thin smoothie. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. It is delicious. Um, let's see, what else can we have in Colombia that's a drink? Oh, yes, you can't go in Colombia without uh, your your national kind of soda. You know, here in the States, you have your Coke or your Pepsi. Down there, you have we have Postobon. It is, uh, there's a lot of flavors with Postobon. Um, everyone has it over there. You gotta give it a shot. And that's a... Um, that's for, safe for all ages. What's not safe for all ages is your national drink as well of uh, <laughs> aguardiente. That is the uh, the liquor of Colombia. Mm -hmm. uh, it literally translates to burning water or like you know fire water. Mm -hmm. um, it's a uh, what is it, Danny? It is a liquor that's got kind of a licorice flavor because it's made with sugar cane and star anise. Um, you take it in shots. Most Colombian parties are going to have a handle of aguardiente and then a handle of rum mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. i personally don't like rum so aguardiente is my my national drink of choice <laughs> there we go there we go spoken um, like a true colombian <laughs> yeah but if if you're not a fan of licorice maybe stay away from it but you gotta at least give it a try when you're down there in colombia you know uh, you know when in rome do as the romans do when in colombia do as the colombians do at least give it a try so there you have it folks you have your assortments of delicious foods that we fully endorse and drinks that you should definitely try uh, while you're over there in Colombia. I hope that you consider it. And this concludes our presentation. We thank you very much for sticking it through and listening to what we had to say about Colombia. We hope that we gave you a sincere and thorough enough taste, just a little taste of the Colombian deliciousness that makes you want to go and see it for yourself. Thank you, and we look forward to discussion and or questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So we've got some questions in the chat. Remember that now you can also um, unmute yourself if you'd like to ask your questions directly. We've got Stephen and Daniela here ready to Hello. answer your questions. There they are. <laughs> live from five forks uh our library branch there so um if anyone wants to unmute themselves go ahead and do so now um or while you're thinking of your questions we can go ahead and get to some of the ones that came in the chat so one is uh i agree with this person they said that you made us very hungry during the presentation <laughs> is there a colombian restaurant in the upstate uh, already available that we could satisfy our cravings before we can get all the way to Colombia? Sure, sure. Um, I can take it part of it first if you want, then you take it if you want to go. So in the Berea area, which is more towards the western side of Greenville County, you have this wonderful uh, restaurant called Cositas Ricas, Cositas Ricas, which, which translates to uh, rich things or mm -hmm. uh, small treasures, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it, is, it is delicious. Uh, they are established a uh, Colombian restaurant. They sell uh, bakery goods and your uh, what, we, what we refer to, you know, as the pandeja paisa. You know, the whole the whole nine yards. Uh, she has also other recommendations. Yes, my favorite is Sacha's Cafe. Um, they have a location on North Pleasantburg, and then they also have just opened a second location um, downtown on uh, Pendleton Street. So it's it's a little more central but they've they've got a lot of very delicious foods whenever mm -hmm. i'm in the mood for home food that's where i go it's it's really authentic i've also heard of a, a place called sofritos uh good good things about it haven't been there personally but i'd love to give it a try oh it looks like eric in the chat knows about sachas yeah, <laughs> yeah nice <laughs> yeah you've got people agreeing with you <laughs> that's good good endorsement while we're on the topic of food, there is another question about food. What kind of cheese do you put in your coffee or hot chocolate? That also intrigued me. <laughs> okay, so uh, actually I actually have been thinking about this for a long time because there's no, <laughs> in my experience, there's no like official name for this cheese. It's just called quesito, which literally means little cheese. Mm -hmm. But you can actually, the best comparison that you can find here in the U.S. is what, you're, what, you're, what we would call Mex Mexican crumbling cheese. 
So if you're like go to Walmart and go to your dairy aisle, you can find a block of Mexican crumbling cheese. But we, we recommend that you go to this uh, Latino uh, food market store called La Unica. Um, and there you can go to the, uh, to the deli section and ask directly for queso fresco, which is a Mexican variant, which is a uh, almost very comparable to uh, quesito. And so it's white, comes in a block. You can chop up small bits of it and put it in your hot chocolate or hot coffee. And it uh, doesn't really melt all the way. It gets, gets soft and it provides mm -hmm. the flavor of cheese in the coffee or, or hot uh, chocolate. You drink that wonderfulness you get to the bottom of your drink and you have this coffee flavored or, or a hot chocolate flavored cheese at the end that you can then also consume. And it is a miracle, I think, personally. Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing. I like the uh, salty sweet combination. So that sounds exactly. delightful. Yeah. My <laughs> mom has always done, if she doesn't, if she can't find quesito, queso fresco, you can also sub in some mozzarella. That will melt a little more, obviously but it still gives it the nice cheesy, salty tinge yeah, it, to your drink. It is a nice addition whenever you, you want to be a little fancy about it, for sure. <laughs> oh, I love that. I'm, I'm curious how many people listening tonight are going to go home and try that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they do. Please yeah. Do. It sounds weird because every time I've told anyone about cheese and my hot chocolate, they look at me like I have three heads. <laughs> but I promise it's worth the try. I it's do it every very, Saturday. Very I'm, I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. I love that. <laughs> All right. We've got another question in the chat. We're moving away from food, but we'll probably come back to it. Uh, you mentioned public transportation. Would you consider Columbia to be walkable or bikeable? I, I would say in the uh, more populated areas like Medellin and, uh, and so forth, that you can go everywhere in public transportation. Mm -hmm. If there's not a taxi available, you can get a rail car and go across the entire city. If there's not that available, there's buses, right? Yeah, I wouldn't recommend walking so much just because traffic can be a little heavy and sometimes a little hard to cross. Bikeable is a little more doable. Yeah, yeah. Because you can get further. Um, but yeah, I'd say that every mode of transportation is available to you in, in Colombia, even in the less populated areas. There's a, you, you, can rent, you can rent horses. Yeah, you can, rent, mm -hmm. you can rent horses. It's it's a interesting. You don't have to own a car to get around in Colombia. You really don't. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. And remember, if you're watching, you can unmute yourself and you can also start your video if you'd like to speak directly to Stephen and Daniela. So feel yeah, free to we, do we that. We don't bite. <laughs> <laughs> don't be shy. <laughs> Show you a uh, good Colombian hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for sharing. This is uh, Jeffrey Lee. And then I've been to Colombia and uh, I really love the color. And also, Comuna, the graffiti tour in Medellin, the Comuna 13, and then the RV, the Parque RV, they were so beautiful. Cartagena, yeah. they're all beautiful there. Oh, so very I'm nice. I'm going to try this uh, Sacha's uh, Cafe. I'm oh. new to town here, so I'm exploring. So. Oh, well, I, I hope you do try it. And I'm glad that, that you had a good time in Colombia. <laughs> yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah. Good, good. What, what was your uh, favorite part of Colombia when you were there? Uh, well, Medellin, definitely, and then mm -hmm. uh, Pereira as well, and then even in Medellin, Laureles, and then uh, Sabas, Sabas, no, I forget the name. There's a little, uh, like an Envigado, and then there's another part. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, oh, Sabaneta. Sabaneta, Sabaneta, Sabaneta. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah that's right. My aunt lives there. Yeah, Sabaneta, yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah, my my aunt lives in Pereira. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Well, like, again, I'm very happy that you enjoyed your time there. And yeah, yeah try and touch this out. It... Sure. There you go. <laughs> that's great. Another ringing endorsement for Colombia. <laughs> yeah, Colombia is beautiful, yeah. So one other question is, if you're planning a trip and going from Greenville to Columbia, how long should you allow in order to see some of the major sites? Hmm. Let's see. Well, that really depends. My, my experience is that I've been done it before in a week. You know, I, I've had a week long a trip there. So I guess you can call that a week long vacation in Colombia. It's doable to have to hit the major spots if you'd like to just kind of graze over the things. Uh, I've also stayed there for a month, and that's doable too. <laughs> but that was, well, you know, that was a family doing that. To, to, to give you a perspective uh, as to how big it is, uh, it is bigger than the combination of uh, France and Germany. 
So uh, you can you can allocate the time accordingly. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot to see there for sure. What would you think was a good uh, um, middle spot? You could do it in a week. I would say comfortably, if you can, do about two weeks, just so then you have a little bit of resting time between all the walking and seeing everything. And then you can have you more opportunities to enjoy all the food and yeah, sights. Yeah. I didn't mention it because uh, I haven't been there too much, but Cartagena, if you love Cartagena, beaches yeah. and you and you love uh, it's the tropical paradise, go to Cartagena. I could spend an entire two weeks there. <laughs> yeah. It's a party town, yeah. We stay there for about three weeks. Oh, three oh there weeks, we go. Uh, there we weeks, go. Yeah. Good time. <laughs> well, that's great. So everyone clear your calendars. Plan these long trips. <laughs> Save all your vacation days. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question? Oh, here we, we have one in the chat. How is Pukaramanga? Am I pronouncing it right? Yes, yes you are. Yes, actually, yeah. I Bukaramanga. actually have never been to Bukaramanga, yeah, I've never been unfortunately. Either. So I can't answer that question. <laughs> you know. All right. No, I am not, not familiar with Bukaramanga, unfortunately. I know the name. Just it, sounds, it, sounds, it sounds familiar. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Do it on your next trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's not a bad idea. Or also feel free to check out some of our many uh, Colombian travel books at the library. <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> definitely. definitely. We've got a large travel section. We also have some lovely resources under our databases too. So you can check out and learn uh, about culture and culture grams is the name of one of our resources. So definitely check that out. Oh, and another uh, question, how's Barranquilla? Barranquilla. Barranquilla, obviously home city of Shakira. I've never been, but I've heard it's lovely. Uh, it's nice and warm and just this lovely, like people in that area. <laughs> Shakira, Shakira, exactly. <laughs> Shakira, Shakira. You've yeah, got your yeah. beaches and, and your lovely uh, coastal foods. Gotcha. Lots of seafood if you're, if you're a fan well, of seafood. I, I don't know so much of the place, but I know of people who have come from the place because I have some folks in my family who you know come here and they've spent the time in Barranquilla. And um, time is not a factor for them. <laughs> I'll say that the, that the See, the Los Costeños, you know, those who live on the coast of, of Colombia, they uh, live a more relaxed, tranquil time. You know, you say, okay, let's be there at three o'clock. They might, they might show up at 3.15, maybe 3.30. Maybe yeah. five. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe five, because they're enjoying their time. They're, enjoy they're in the moment, present, and they're not so worried about what's coming in the future, but rather what's happening now. And if you want to stay and enjoy them now, you might just get there at five instead of three. <laughs> so Barranquilla is definitely, uh, I would, I would, I would. I would enjoy a trip there. I've been told a lot. The city looks looks beautiful, very beautiful. Well, that sounds lovely. Thank you. Does anyone else want to unmute themselves or pose another question in the chat? We've got time for one more question. We have to wrap things up. This is your one and only chance to ask people live. <laughs> And of course, if you think of another question later about traveling, um, Colombia, anything, um, you can feel free, of course, to email us at explore at greenvillelibrary.org and we will find the answer for you. Um, yes, and de check the uh, chat for names of places for you to try out <laughs> in the area too. All right, if no one else has any questions, and we have to say a great big thank you to Stephen and Daniela. That was wonderful. We appreciate you sharing your time, your talent, uh, all of your knowledge. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank Muchas you. Muchas gracias. Thank Muchas gracias. you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, of course, if you enjoyed this evening, we hope you'll come back for some more adult virtual events. So go to greenvillelibrary.org slash events, and you can see our virtual events calendar. Be sure to register for anything that's upcoming that interests you. We might even be doing some more travel programs a little bit later on too. We hope you've enjoyed the Armchair Traveler series. This whole series has been recorded and so you can find that under Explore Your World on the Adult Virtual Activities page. So do check that out as well. Thank you all for coming. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also sign up for our e-newsletter so you don't miss any of these wonderful events that we've had going on. So thank you so much for coming. We hope you have a wonderful evening and we hope to see you soon.
Gracias, nos vemos. Gracias. Good night, everyone. Good night.